Hello members and welcome to this YouTube channel, Creative Minds. So today we are going to learn about milestone one of the computer studies project. That is Victory School Club membership system. So I want us to have an overview of what is required in milestone one. So in milestone one, this is what is required. Problem definition the existing system overview and structure, proposed system, system flowchart, fields and data types, entities and variables, input design and output design. Basically, this is just the design and most of the work is done in documentation in Word. So designing of the system is done under system construction. So previous videos we have done about we have done the complete version of system construction. So today I want us to dive into the flowchart, the documentation bit of it. That is milestone one. And I have structured a sample here. So this is milestone one. In the preliminary pages, you have the title page. So the title page, you have the name, school code, index number, all those. Then you have the declaration whereby you have the student's declaration and supervisor's declaration. Then you have the dedication. So you dedicate your work, maybe to your parents, to the almighty God for helping you through. Then you have the acknowledgement. So you acknowledge people who have helped you through the journey of system development. Then you have the table of contents. So we, have, we learn how to create the table of contents. So, but today I want us to go to the first thing, first things first. So we say that we have problem definition. So we have problem definition. So the first thing under chapter one, we have background introduction. So this is where you introduce the project. So what is Victory School doing? The background information. So in this example, you have said Victory School offers a variety of curricular activities organized under clubs and societies. These clubs enhance blah, 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 all those. Eh? However, the manual system for managing membership, activities, and finances is time-consuming and error-prone. So we have described the Victory School, which is the organization, and also we have described the system that is underway, that is on the ground. So in computing, we normally say in system development, there is always a system, always. So, and you always assume if you're creating a computer system, there's always a manual system. So under this manual system, ever a manual system is erroneous, it is time consuming, it has a lot of disadvantages. That is why we are creating a computer system. So we have the system analysis problem definition. So problem definition, what is problem definition? A problem. So the man, we have said that we have a manual system. Victory School is using the manual system. So manual system, it has a lot of disadvantages. So under this part is where you define the problem at hand. So the problem that you're experiencing is the manual system. So here I've said that Victory School currently relies on a manual system to manage its club memberships activities and finances. So this approach presents several challenges in efficient membership management, complex financial tracking, limited reporting capability, lack of data security, inadequate oversight of club activities. So this is just a few of the disadvantages of a manual system. And the manual system you're talking about is the Victory School Club membership system. So you as a student or a teacher, you can draft the different problems. So you can think about what are the challenges? Challenges facing a manual system. Yes, and a manual system is not a computerized system. We have those traditional filing methods, the ledger books and so and so. So the manual system uses a pen and a paper. So what are the different challenges that you can encounter when using a system which uses pen and paper? So those are the few examples of challenges. So and then you say the proposed system aims to address these issues. So the above mentioned issues, the issues that you mention. So your proposed system should be able to address those issues. 
So the proposed system aims to address these issues by introducing a computerized database management system. So the access that you're going to create is a computerized database management system. So this system will streamline membership registration, automate financial computations, and enhance the generation of accurate and timely reports, ensuring the efficient operation of all clubs within the Victory School. So overview of the existing system. We are from the background information problem definition, and you know that the current system, the existing system is a manual system. So what is the overview, the general structure? of this existing system, the money system. So the current system at Victory School for Managing Club Operation is entirely manual. It relies on paper-based records. You see that a manual system relies on paper and pen. So paper-based records. So we have different disadvantages, manual financial management. So you have financial management for our computerized system. So activity tracking limited reporting, data insecurity, inefficient member, transition management. So all those are a few, we will expound on them. System structure, what is the system structure? You are going to explain the system structure of the current system, not the proposed system. Some people get it wrong here. You're going to tell the system structure of the manual system, the manual system. How is the process done? The first one, membership registration. Students manually fill out registration forms. You tell us what is under the registration form. Financial man management. Registration fees are collected in cash and recorded manually. Yes? So that is it. Activity tracking. Club, club patrons and leaders manually track details of activities and events on paper. So those are the different system structures and all the others. So overview of the proposed system. Yes, you have talked about the current system, which is a manual system, which has encountered different limitations. So these limitations are what leads us to development of a computerized system. So under this part is where we are going to describe the overview of the proposed system, where we have the system overview. So you're going to say the proposed system the victory school club membership system is designed to replace the existing manual processes with an automated efficient and user-friendly database management system then you go further to explain the components so components membership management automated registration the other one it was manual financial management automated tracking the other one was manual activity tracking Recording details of revenue generating activities such as event names, dates, and amounts. You have talked about that and our database. So creation of tables, if you have not watched our video, go back and do that. Reporting, generation of real-time reports. Real-time reports. What about the manual system? There is no real-time reports. Eh? And if you want to create real-time reports, it is very tedious. Eh? Yes. Security and data integrity. So uh, our system is secure. What about the manual system? Papers. Is, are papers secure? They are not secure. Eh? Yeah, you can easily lose them. Anyone can access them. It doesn't have access control. But the proposed system has access control. User-friendly interface. Yes, we've designed input screens. When you go to our video of the forms, you realize that we have user-friendly interfaces. So we have designed and customized user-friendly interfaces through our database management system. So having said that, we go to the objectives of the proposed system. What will this proposed system solve or what will it achieve? So the objective of the proposed system are as follows. Remember that objectives of a system should be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. So you should write objectives which are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. And objectives always will begin with a two, always. Another one. Benefits. So after you have tackled the objectives, you go to the benefits. You have seen that you have talked about the manual system. The manual system is disadvantageous, has a lot of limitations. So if you're going to 
implement the proposed system and the proposed system is said to curb those limitations. So what are these benefits? What are the benefits of the proposed system? Yes, we realize that you cannot implement something which doesn't have a lot of benefits compared to the previous system. So under this part is where you write the benefits of the proposed system. And for you to be able to easily write the benefits, you consider the disadvantages of the manual system. So from the disadvantages of the manual system is what will lead you to generating benefits of this proposed system. So those are a few. Then we go to disadvantages. Every good has the bad side. Eh? Yes. So we have the disadvantages. So this is where we talk about the cost. Of course, a computerized system is expensive. So we talk about the cost. Time, time consuming, implementation, user resistance. Yes, that is why in system development, we have user training. User training. User training is very important to curb the user resistance. So also in an organization, normally us as human beings, we tend to resist new things. We tend to resist new things. So we have user resistance as a disadvantage. Technical issues are that all those. Scope of the system. So scope of the system, these are the boundaries of the system and the features that it will include, eh? the boundaries and the features that it will include. What will your system include? Yes, my system includes membership management, leadership management, all those. So under the scope, you write, what will your system include? Then you have cost and benefit analysis. So whenever you have a project or anything actually in real life, cost and benefit analysis is very important. Because a project, a project should have more benefits and low cost so that it can be viable. But a project which has, which has high cost and has less benefit, it is not a viable project. You cannot venture into it. So under this part, you're going to analyze, to deal with the cost analysis. So you break down the budget. So the project should fit your budget. Benefit analysis. What are the benefits? What are the, what are the sum of the benefits? You write them there. Feasibility study. Feasibility study. These are study conducted to define the practicality of implementing the proposed system. Feasibility studies. Technical feasibilities, economic feasibilities, operational feasibilities, legal feasibilities, schedule feasibilities. So you discuss about all them here. Fact finding. So fact finding is a very important part. So it involves gathering information of the current system and the requirements, eh? user requirements. User requirements are gathered, are gathered at this stage. And user requirements, this is a fuel, fuel for generation of the new project. So you'll talk, you'll choose one. It's not a must you write all of them. You have different fact finding methods. Interviews, these are fact finding the same as data collection. So we have different data collection methods. Interviews, you draw one interview, you draw a sample. Eh? Yes, you write an interview, then you draw a sample of an interview. Observation, if you used observation or you are intending to use observation. If you used questionnaires, you draw a questionnaire. Document review. What is this document review? So you realize that in a manual system, everything that was being done was recorded somewhere. So you as a developer, when you go and, re and read that document and understand it, that is a document review so that you can gather requirements. Then you have summary. Yeah, so that will just summarize. What are the matters arising? What are the matters arising from the data collection? You can summarize them there. System requirements and specifications. These are the minimum requirements that one will require to install your system. So if your system can run in an operating system of Windows 7, Windows 11, you specify there. Database software, of course, we need Microsoft Access. In high school, you are dealing with basic access databases. So you need a Microsoft Access. Processor, you specify there, hard disk there. Then you have another part. So this part of flowcharts, I'm going to explain it in an independent video. So you follow along. Tables. So tables, you remember that under my videos of designing tables, 
of design tables. So that is system construction. But this is system design chapter, the other chapter, system design. So you begin with table structures. And here you draw tables in design view. Tables in design view. I have explained to you the tables in design view. So you go and watch my videos in tables. So here you draw at least five tables. You draw them. Then you have input designs. So input design, you draw the, in, the input designs, the forms, the way they appear in Microsoft Access. You, you draw them at least four. Then you have output screens. So most people forget about the output screens and it is marked. It is there in the marking scheme. So when you come here, you've said input design and output design. Input design and output design. So you should draw at least three output designs. Yes, you have a number of them, but you draw at least three of them. Then you have relationship diagrams. So we have different relationships. I talked about relationships. So here, you're going to draw a three, at least three ERDs, eh? three entity relationship diagrams. So we have one to many relationships, one to many, majorly it is one to many, so that way. So after that, we are done with that. We are done with milestone one. Milestone two is system construction. So stay tuned. I'm going to do milestone two. I'm going to do the flowchart and I'm going to do the whole documentation and the whole system step by step. So make sure you have subscribed to my video so that you can't miss out my content. Also, if you have reached here, give me a like, leave a comment. There's a comment section below. If you have any queries, reach out to me via the email address below and the phone number. Thank you.